Welcome back to another Trailby tutorial. In this video, we're going to start creating a script or screenplay using Trailby. So we're going to be creating dialogue, characters, scenes, and uh, just kind of going through the motions, learning how to do this. Uh, I highly recommend pulling up a script. I have one here from Back to the Future. So you kind of see the layout. If you're not familiar with the way it's done, because maybe you think you can just go ahead and open up like Microsoft Office or LibreOffice and just kind of type up something and do some tabs and indents. But the nice thing about Trelby is it structures everything for you. So there's kind of a standard where you have your uh, the character is going to be centered. And then what they're saying is sort of like indented a little bit. So this is the dialogue. Uh, sometimes they'll be in parentheses like this eyeing him suspiciously in parentheses. So that's giving them like an action for what they're doing. And then the actual uh, scene has like a title. This one's the cafe, scene 47. And it has like a little bit of backstory. So Marty, uh, Mar Marty, Marty saunders out of the phone booth and takes a seat at the counter. And so it just kind of says like setting up the scene. Anyway, we're going to try and recreate something like this in uh, Trelby. So by default, when you first open it up, the first thing it's asking for is the scene. The first thing we type in is going to be our scene. So we can kind of like copy on Back to the Future. We can just go, this scene is called Cafe. We hit Enter, and then all of a sudden it changes to Action. The next thing we want to write is the action. So what's happening in the cafe? We don't have to copy Back to the Future exactly, mostly because we're going to get uh, copyright infringements if we do that. And so let's just make up our own. So we'll, we'll write up something in this scene, right? Like um, we'll have a guy named uh, Bill... Uh, is crying at the cafe or something like that. And then we hit enter again, and it's saying, okay, more action. What do you want to have? And so we could type in some more action here if we wanted to, uh, or we can just go right to our character. So to toggle between the character, it says, if you hit enter, you're going to be typing in some more action, talking about the action that's happening. We could even be like, Bill gets punched by, you know, Tom or something. And so there's like action happening here. But then we go to character, we hit tab. So we'll hit enter here, so we're on a new line. Now we'll hit tab. That takes us into the character mode. So this is asking for the name of a character. And just like with cafe, if I didn't mention, but we didn't have to do this all capitals. I just typed it in the keyboard and it made it all capitals. Well, the characters are gonna be the same way. So maybe we wanna have Bill say something. If we just type in Bill, I just typed it in all lowercase and it appears uppercase in our character. Now if I hit enter, it changes to dialogue. So now what's the dialogue? What's Bill going to say? We don't need to do quotations. We don't need to do anything like that. We just start typing the dialogue of what he's saying right now. He'll, he'll say, I'm so sad today or something. And if we want to have him say some more things on a different line, I'll show you first. You might think by getting to a line you hit enter, but what that does, it takes us to the next character. So if we start, if we want Bill to say something else, like why am I so sad? Well, we're actually creating a new character called Why Am I. This is the name of the character. We don't want to do that. What we really want to do is to get a second line. We go to the end of this one and we hold down the shift key and press enter. So holding down shift while pressing enter lets us enter another line of text for Bill. Why am I so sad? You can tell I'm a master at writing screenplays, can't you? Okay, now we're going to hit enter and it takes us to the next, it says, it prompts us to put in the next character. So maybe Tom is the next person that's going to speak. So we have Tom here. We hit enter. And what is the dialogue for Tom? So anytime you want to see what's happening, just look up in the top right and it gives you some cues. It says we can press tab right now to go into, uh, oh, parenthetical. So maybe Tom is, is uh, doing something. So if we hit tab right now, it puts some parentheses. So we can give like a, something that Tom's not saying but doing. So Tom is like, um, I don't know, pacing back and forth oh boy so tom's like pacing back and forth and now what happens if we hit enter well it goes into the dialogue for tom what happens if we hit tab tab's going to go into the action so it's going to go back here and we can kind of have some more action happening so which i guess is kind of like in parentheses it sees i did the action i could I guess i could have done that either way but i'll hit enter for dialogue so while he's pacing back and forth he's saying um, actually, th this isn't really, I shouldn't have done the pacing back and forth. That could have been more an action. I should have said like worried, you know, in his voice or something or angry in his voice. But for the dialogue, he'll say like, what can he say? I don't know. I want some pancakes. So he's saying he wants pancakes. Now, if we hit enter, we're going to be, it'll prompt us for another character. 
if we hit tab, it'll take us to the action. Um, another way we can do this too, if ever we do something wrong, maybe we hit enter and we want Tom to be saying something else like we did. We didn't hit uh, shift enter on accident. And so, but we type in, uh, where is all the food? And then we, we realize, oh man, we don't want, this is a character called where is all the food. We can right click on this line and change the element type. So we can select this and say, this is, this is supposed to not be an actor. This is supposed to be a dialogue. So we click dialogue and it puts it right back where it needs to be. Or maybe we did, maybe we hit shift enter and we're, and we're trying to say, Bill is speaking. And then we're like, oh wait, this is all messed up. It's all out of order. So we right click on Bill and say, this is supposed to be a character Bill. But then it's like, well, there's a shift there. So that kind of messed us up. Control Z, we'd have to break that out first. And then it just does it automatically for us. But just be aware, you can right click and change this. Maybe we want to change this to a scene. So, so the next scene we want to have, this is the cafe scene. The next scene is going to be called, um, or we'll just say football game. But again, we're, this is thinks it's a, the name of a character called football game. If the scene is a football game, we right click, go to element type and go to scene. Now the next scene is a football game. Uh, and then Bill, we can have Bill say something here. So like, goodbye. Now that we're in this other scene though, now Trelby is going to remember our characters. So the action can be like, uh, the players get ready for the game or something that's happening, you know, setting up this scene. And then it's like, all right, more action? No, character. So hit tab. And then what's the character? If we type in B, it's going to bring up a drop down and say, oh, is Bill the character you're going to talk about? And we can just hit enter because it remembers the names of our characters. So Bill says something here and then we can say T and it says, oh, is it Tom? Is that the character you're, you're wanting to, to, to you? And we're like, yeah. And we could have some, some different characters. We can just create one on the fly called Tim and we can have one called uh, Thor. And now when we hit T, it says, who's the, who's the character, Thor, Tim, or Tom? Those are the three that start with T. And we're like, oh, Tom, click Tom. Oop. Or arrow keys and enter. That's how we get down to Tom. Anyway, uh, that's about all you need to know, I think, at least for the functionality of this. So no notice we didn't do anything from the drop downs or the tools. We're just doing it all on the canvas with right clicking on the elements or by using the keys. Okay, one more thing I wanna show you is that we can go to, uh, if you go to file and go to settings, and go to change. If you wanna learn some of the shortcut keys, click on keyboard. And for example, to, to change to dialogue, if we didn't wanna right click, there's a shortcut key for that. It's Alt D. We could change this shortcut if we wanted to. To change to a character, it's Alt C. To change to action, it's Alt A. To change to the scene, it's Alt S. So some of these things, if we wanna change this to action, we just put the cursor on this line and hit Alt A. And now this is action. And if we want, maybe we have something in the action called uh, uh, Karen, and we want this Karen to be a character, we can just go to Alt C, and now Karen is a character. Alt A, action, uh, what, what else was there? Alt D, dialogue, Alt S, scene. So that's another way you can use the keyboard shortcuts if you don't wanna right click and go. Some other elements you can do is shot, like the shot, the camera shot, action break, None, you could just have like a none, like a note. Um, and again, I'm not really a screen writer. I'm more of a software, open source software advocate. And so you'll know if, you're, if you've are if you done screenplays before, hopefully this is like a you know nice convenient thing for you. In future videos, we're gonna look at importing, exporting. We're gonna talk about some of the tools you can use like uh, spell check and find and replace and then generating reports. So hopefully you found this video informative. Go ahead and leave your questions or comments below if you have any. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I have lots of other videos teaching how to use free and open software. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you in the next video.